In this video, I get my camera as high as I can to shoot some overhead portraits in my small studio. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now in this video, I'm gonna try and get an unusual point of view, at least for my photography, by shooting a model directly from above. Now let's be clear, if you're only gonna do a couple of shots, there's nothing wrong with just grabbing a, a step ladder, climbing up and being very careful taking your pictures. But if you're gonna do this for any period of time, you gotta do something like a boom arm setup. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's get the camera on here and go through how to set this up. I'm gonna be using a boom arm for this shoot. Boom arms come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and designs. Whatever design you use, you have to think about the safety of your gear and your model below. So at the moment, you can see this is fairly extended out, but it's not perfectly balanced. So to make sure everything stays safe, I've got a counterweight at one end, camera at the other, and I just slide it along the arm until it balances perfectly even on its unlocked down state. Once you get to this point, that's great, that's balanced, that's safer. Let's tighten everything up like that. I've also got another sandbag down the bottom, that's just a given. And if you want even more safety, then you can have the, the leg pointing in the same direction as the boom arm. So what about the camera? Well, I'm using my Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II. On top is the Flashpoint Streak Light Trigger, and in my pocket is another one. It's the same one, same channel, same group, and I can use this to remote trigger the flash whilst I'm doing metering, and that's kind of useful to have too. Not essential, but it helps. Now, to see what's going on, I need to be able to look from the camera point of view down. And of course, I can use the, the flippy foldy screen here and use Live View to, to set that up. But I like to use a laptop. So I've got my Microsoft Surface Book and I'm going to plug it into the USB cable. This is the one that comes with the Olympus cameras. Some cameras like Olympus have their own USB type socket, so it has to be their cable. The other end of the cable goes orange, and the orange bit is a Tether Tools USB repeater, which means that as the signal goes down the long cable, it doesn't lose quality or strength, meaning I don't get any dropouts here. I'm also using the Olympus software, which means that I will get not only a review of the image when I take the pictures, but way more usefully, I'll get to be able to preview a live view from the actual camera itself, so I can frame this all up, get everything absolutely perfect, and that just helps an awful lot when I'm setting up the shot. Speaking of which, let's get a model in and start doing some shooting. So once again, I'm joined in the studio by Adrienne. Do you wanna say hello? And she's gonna be the model for this shoot. So we're gonna use Adrienne, we're gonna get her to lie down on the background like that. I've already got the camera set up, it's all tethered, it's ready to go. But there are a few things you need to consider. So let's start with the background. Normally when I'm shooting, I would have a separation between the model and the background. That will allow me to light the background separately. Clearly that's not gonna happen because the background is the floor. And unless your model can levitate, there's no way you can actually light the floor separately to the model. So think about your background choice, it will matter. Next, you've got to think about the lighting in general because you've probably got an idea of how you want to light a, a normal upright portrait, but when you go overhead, you have to think everything is flipped over. So normally I'd light the light from the front, slightly above, but above actually means further away. It means higher as in away from the camera where you are, and that will give me above lighting. Now, will that work for exposure? Well, the way to find out is to take a meter reading Let's get my flash meter. And I meter exactly the same as I would if Adrian was stood or sat up. So I get my flash meter, I've got my spare remote trigger, and I'm gonna pop this underneath the chin with the little dome pointing back at the light I want to meter. And I'm getting F11. That's perfect, the camera is already set to F11. That should give me correct exposure. Let's take a test shot, see how that looks. Okay, so Adrienne, if you can look towards the, the camera for me. And as you can see, that looks fine, except we've got a lit side and a shady side, which might be all right, but I think I would like to have a bit more even illumination. So to even things up, I'm gonna do what I would normally do, get a second light and push some light in. 
Now I could put a second light sort of over here and just light the shady side, but I've got a, a, a softbox on one and a bare light on the other side. That's gonna give some weird hard shadows on one side. But if you work in a small studio like I am here and you have white walls, well use those as an impromptu light modifier. By pointing my speed light at the wall, it'll become much bigger, bounce in much softer light. Let's just take a test shot like that. And that fills in the shadows beautifully. So lighting when you've got somebody lying down and you're shooting overhead is no different to any other sort of lighting. You just need to think that it's slightly flipped. So let's have a little think about posing because, well, there's loads of different poses you could do, but there's a couple of things to consider. The first one is where are you gonna get your model to look? Now, normally we interact with the model by having the camera in front of us and talking to the model, but now the camera is up high. So you've gotta to remember to direct your model from the point of view of the camera. Next thing to consider, gravity. Now gravity has an effect. We know how gravity works. It works on a downward direction, which is easy to guess what's gonna happen when someone is sat or stood up. But the minute they lie down, gravity doesn't play ball. Let me show you. Okay, Adrian, we're just gonna take a little picture, have a look at the camera. And as you can see, gravity is not doing what it should do. Adrian's hair is going everywhere apart from where gravity would normally dictate it goes, which in itself is brilliant and half the point of doing these overhead shots. However, if you want it to look like it's more natural, you need to think, how does gravity work? So Adrian, I'm gonna come down and move your hair if that's okay. So I'm just gonna bring your hair a little bit tighter in towards your body and we'll tuck that underneath like that. Come around the other side and we'll tuck that underneath like that. Okay, if you lie back down, that's great. And when I take this shot, you can see that now things seem to be working much better. Now that's great, but everything has an effect. Clothing, uh, the skin on your face can have a, a different effect with gravity. Bear that in mind. Okay, so that's some basic ideas. Let's take some shots like this, see how it goes. Okay, are you ready? Okay, I think what we actually want to do is probably get you to... So I've completely changed the background. We've gone for something much more interesting. We've got a whole bunch of books, 40 books down on the floor here that I've laid out in a nice sort of circular pattern. And we're gonna get Adrian to lie down right in the middle of that. Now, I was able to get this all nice and laid out using the, the live view feature. And again, being tethered to my laptop here means that I can actually do that really easily. And uh, well, let's just give this a whirl. So Adrian, if you wanna lie down right in the middle of that pile of books, see where those two are together. Okay, so you're gonna to need to come back towards me ever so slightly. Okay, keep coming, keep coming. That's it, hold it right there. Fantastic. Okay, now I haven't moved the lights. They are exactly the same, same exposure, same setting. So if I take a test picture, if you look at the camera for me. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. Okay, let's do a shoot like this. Are you ready? Excellent stuff. Okay, I think with this one, what we wanna do is really get your hair laid out big time. So, if we get rid of Teddy for a minute, Well, I think those pictures look absolutely amazing. And while shooting overhead really does bring its own set of unique problems, especially in a small studio, it really is worth the effort. 
Now, if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.